Nine minutes now after the hour developing. The United States only has one full day left to fully evacuate troops and citizens from Afghanistan. Tomorrow is President Biden's deadline. Rocket fire continued overnight targeting Kabul's airport. It's still not clear if anyone was hurt in this latest attack. Meantime, U.S. officials say a drone strike did take out a vehicle that was carrying explosives over the weekend. A suicide bomber was reportedly inside of that vehicle. Afghan officials say secondary explosions killed multiple civilians, including three children. Well, President Biden uh, looking on during the dignified transfer of the bodies of our U.S. soldiers and Marines on Sunday. The remains of 13 U.S. service members were returned to their families. They were all killed in a suicide attack at Kabul's airport in Afghanistan on Thursday. And joining us right now with more on the unfolding crisis is former senior advisor for Middle Eastern Affairs at the Department of Security. We want to be joined right now with our good friend Chris Hinn. Chris, can you hear me okay? Yes, I can hear you. I hope we have a better connection this time. Yes, much better. Great to see you. So let's talk a little bit about this uh, this 24 hour period that we're in right now. What can we expect? Well, I don't think we're going to see much different. I really believe this this whole thing is becoming so I I rate this. I'm still in the in the UAE and Dubai and the country here is concerned about their security. But more importantly, what's going to happen to our Americans in the next 24 hours? There's got to be something we can do. This is ridiculous. Uh, Pakistan and and the you know the ISIS uh, Khurasan now the new name for the ISIS K they call them. Uh, they're they're right in there involved. And and honestly, it just breaks my heart to see that the U.S. has not planned accordingly. And the incompetency of this administration or anyone and does I don't care who they are. They're incompetent to handle this uh, movement. I think it's time that we raise up and try and get those people out and I hope we can get them out as much as we can because the rest of them will have a, a you know bleak looking future and I don't want to say that. Chris do we have any idea at this point and this has been a, something I think that's been confusing for a lot of people do we have any idea how many Americans are still in Afghanistan who need to get out? I, I was talking to a friend of mine at uh, SOCOM and he told me there's still a lot of people that are trying to get out. But also what's really sad, besides if I may say this, people are, are profiting off this. Uh, companies are charging 300000 to get people out. That's ridiculous. But there's maybe uh, 15000 We don't know. Nobody seems to know. But the U.S. needs to do something. Chris, what are your concerns about the future of Afghanistan once we do have that final troop pullout? Look. Right three weeks ago, I did a report and I did say one thing. It's going to be a harbor, harbor and harboring terrorism. Uh, Pakistan allowed over 80,000 individuals into Afghanistan, Taliban. Our equipment will be sold and given away on the black market and to Pakistan. But the concern I have is that whole region, if we don't do something about it our, ourselves, other allies, it will breed ISIS. Uh, Hezbollah, every terror group will be not. And I have dealt with this now for 17 years in terrorism. And I can tell you, this is what I'm seeing at the, you know, at the uh, in, in the future with it. Well, Chris, at least we forget that 20 years ago that the reason we went into Afghanistan in the first place was uh, to avenge what happened on 9-11. Are, are there concerns that, that we will be in that same situation if we just sort of allow the country to do whatever it wants? It's going to be worse, Amy. It will be worse. We left $85 billion of equipment. I'd like to know who made that decision at the what level of the U.S. government to leave to our enemies to fight us back with our own equipment, our own firearms, and our own ammunition, and tanks, and helicopters, and airplanes. That is, I just cannot fit it here yet, uh, Amy. It just seems that it's scary. The whole region is concerned. Uh, I, speak to law enforcement in this region. I speak to government officials. They are concerned of the future, yeah. and everybody is. Well, Chris, we uh, appreciate your insight of this. Uh, the Pentagon does say that they're going to try to destroy some of that equipment, but uh, obviously 24 hours now, so uh, it's hard to know well, how well, that will that's happen. That's the case. That's the case. They need to go to Pakistan and destroy it there because it's already moving to Pakistan. Our equipment is already been moving over there. So that's, that's, that's the sad part of it. Christopher Hen, uh, we always appreciate uh, your insight, your expertise. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us this morning. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, Aaron. Coming up here in Good Day Our Life.